The Netflix show Inventing Anna might have been released months ago, but it's still making headlines. Uh, but turns out it's for all the wrong reasons. Rachel Deloach Williams, an actual person a character in the show was based on, has filed a defamation lawsuit against the streaming service. To know the full story, keep on watching. First, Rachel files a case against Netflix. Williams, a former Vanity Fair photo editor, is also a former friend of Sorokin. According to her, she was forced into paying an enormous bill. Six $62,000 for a luxurious six-night trip in Morocco. Anna was supposed to cover expenses for the trip, but Rachel ended up being cornered into making the payment. This was also shown in the Netflix show, and Rachel confirmed that this did indeed happen. But the event isn't what Rachel is mad about. While talking to People magazine, her lawyer revealed that the case was filed because the production company used their client's real name and biographical details and made her out to be a horrible person. According to the defamation lawsuit, Netflix portrayed her as a greedy, disloyal, cowardly, manipulative, snobbish, and opportunistic person. Next up, details about the legal action filed revealed. On the 29th of August, 2022, legal action was filed for the alleged false portrayal of her as a vile and contemptible person. The action went on to state that Williams was subjected to online abuse, negative in-person interactions, and derogatory comments in podcasts. It also claimed that ever since the show aired, she had received thousands of abusive messages and it had also caused catastrophic damage to her reputation that was otherwise avoidable. It continued that Williams doesn't challenge Netflix's right to have an unpleasant character on the show, but if they had chosen to base the character on her and have it portrayed negatively, the character should have been given a fictitious name. The action expressed that the character should have had different identifying details so that no one would believe that it was a portrayal of the real Rachel Williams. Moving forward, it stated that the American subscription service gave fictional names to other characters in the show, unlike Williams. They also expressed concern over the fact that the series used her personal details, such as the name of her employer, neighborhood, and alma mater, and also cast an actress who resembled her in many ways. Let's talk about what Netflix had to gain from this villainization. When the real Rachel Deluge spoke up against Netflix's portrayal of her in the show, many wondered why they had made her the villain of the show. Surely they could have developed a different storyline since they weren't sticking to facts anyway. As the show says, everything is true except the parts that are totally made up. Even The Independent made a statement about the demonization of Williams in their review of the show and claimed that it seems like the show has a personal vendetta against her, and she believes it as well. According to her legal statement, Williams claimed that the reason Netflix deliberately gave her such a bad reputation is that she had chosen to play for the other team and given her rights to HBO. Rachel had written a first-hand account of her friendship with the con artist for Van Fair, a month before New York Magazine ran their story in April of 2018. She also secured a book deal and sold the TV rights to her story to HBO. Even though we do see some of the events that she confirms in the book, they appear to be dramatized and staged with the purpose of making her look like the antagonist in the fraudster's life. Netflix has yet to comment on the case. Following up, why is Rachel suing Netflix now? The public started to see the author as an opportunist after the show aired and even her law suit, with the streaming company seemed like she was trying to make money out of the situation. That could be true because in a back and forth between Rachel and Sorokin on Instagram, Anna revealed that HBO had canceled the series based on Williams' book. Even though this has yet to be confirmed, an FAQ on her website states that HBO did option her book, My Friend Anna, but the option has expired and the project is not in development. Deadline also claimed that she could be sued as a retribution on the installment plan, since it doesn't seem like the HBO series will be happening. And with the Netflix series being out in the public for everyone to view, it could leave her reputation tarnished because of the show's portrayal. Even now, after months of Rachel trying to get her truth out, her Instagram is full of comments stating that she is still trying to take advantage and profit off of Anna as well as calling her out for befriending rich people to pay for her lifestyle. With many other vile comments, it doesn't come as a surprise that she has limited the comments on her Instagram post. Finally, what is Anna Sorokin doing now? Despite being given a prison sentence that was supposed to last 4 to 12 years, Anna was let out in 2021 on parole. However, the fake wealthy German heiress was soon put behind bars again, only after six weeks after she was let out. This time around, she was in trouble with immigration and customs enforcement for overstaying her visa. Currently, Delvey is being held and waiting for her appeal proceedings and has stated that she wishes to stay in the United States. She also sat down to talk 
talked to NBC and stated that she would like to be known as more than just a scam artist, stating that she would like to be given a chance to focus her energy on something legal. And it looks like she has found something to focus on. In March of 2022, she participated in a pop-up art show titled Free and Delvey. The show featured 33 artists that had made artworks responding to Delvey's story. She also presented five of her own works, which were reproduced by the show's co-curator Alfred Martinez. In June, she announced a series of NFTs titled Reinventing Anna, and there's a catch. Along with owning the NFT, the buyers will also be given access to Anna. This will be done through in-person meetings, exclusive VIP live streams, and phone calls. Delvey has expressed excitement for her new project and stated that she is excited to connect with her supporters. Other related news. First up, Anna surprises Columbia journalism students with her virtual appearance in class. Sorokin talked to the Columbia journalism students as she appeared as a virtual guest in their intro to reporting class on August 29th. Talking candidly, she spoke about her relationship with the press via the phone from a detention facility. The students quizzed the fraudster about her experience as a source to which she replied that it was important to treat sources with respect and not like she was crazy. The scammer went on to say that talking in these interviews is like having a conversation with anyone and it's important for the reporters to be friendly or at least understanding. A student questioned what was the one question that Sorokin wished she would stop getting asked, and she replied, if I'm sorry. She had infamously told New York Times reporter Emily Palmer in a 2019 jailhouse interview that she was not sorry for any crimes. And of course, her comments put her in a difficult situation when she was asked by the parole board about the article. Coming up, Netflix settles Queen's Gambit defamation suit. It was reported that the streaming service has agreed to settle a lawsuit filed by Georgian chess master Nona Kapriandashvili. She alleged that she was defamed in one of the episodes of the series The Queen's Gambit. Nona argued that her accomplishments were belittled when the series wrongly stated that she had never had any male opponents. She had, in fact, faced 59 male competitors by 1968, which is the year in which the series was set. Netflix has tried to have the lawsuit dismissed, but with no luck. The matter has now been settled, but the terms of it were not disclosed. A Netflix spokesperson expressed that the company was pleased that the matter had been resolved. Wrapping it up, Netflix series The Crown briefly pauses production. Netflix's Emmy-winning series The Crown has reportedly paused the filming of its sixth and final season following the death of Queen Elizabeth on the 8th of September 2022. It was stated that the production was suspended in respect of the monarch. Netflix went on to say that filming will also not take place on the day of the Queen's funeral. In the first two seasons of the show, Princess Elizabeth was played by Claire Foy, who gradually grew into her role as the monarch. In season three, we got to see Olivia Coleman as the more mature queen, while Imelda Staunton takes over in the fifth season. The upcoming season that is reported to air in November is expected to cover the events in the early and mid-1990s. Fans have stated that they are looking forward to seeing the late Princess Diana's story unfold on the show, as well as the events that lead up to her divorce from the now King Charles. That's a wrap for this video. What do you think about Rachel's suing Netflix over inventing Anna? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.